All right, let's get vector static started with a discussion about forces. A force is simply an action on one body from another. So let's say that we have this gray box here. If I went up to this box and I applied a force of 50 pounds to try to move it to the right, it would look something like this. The force here is represented by this arrow, and there are several important characteristics that we want to take a look at. The first is that we have a point of application, which is simply where the force is being exerted on the object. And in this case, the force is being exerted on the left side of the box. The second is the magnitude of the force, which is simply how much the force is. And in this case, it's 50 pounds. And finally, we have the direction. Uh, and in this case, it is to the right. So the force that's being applied to this box also has its own line of action, which is just an infinite line on which a force can act on an object and still produce similar results. And in, the, and in this example right now, if we applied the force on the left side of the box and tried to move it to the right, we would be pushing the box. If we applied the force on the right side of the box and still tried to move it right, we would be pulling the box. So every force has its own line of action on which the force can be applied and still produce similar results. In the example before this, we saw that the box would move right whether we applied the force on the left side of the box or the right side of the box. As long as the force was being applied on the line of action and moving towards the right, the box would move to, towards the right. However, let's say that the force was acting on the left side of the box, but in this case we applied the force to the left. Now the box would move left. So it's really important to indicate which way the force is being applied on an object or the sense. So let's say we have this little particle here, this little gray dot. Now let's say that we have multiple forces acting on this object, forces A and forces B each with their own line of action. The cool thing about vector statics is that we can take these vector forces, which here are represented as arrows, and find a single equivalent force that would produce similar results on the same body as did the two forces, A and B. Graphically, we can find this resultant force by applying the parallelogram law, which states that the vector forces on a plane can be drawn in a tip-to-tail fashion to produce the resultant force on the object. This means that if I took force B and I connected its tail to the tip of A, and then I took force A and I connected its tail to the tip of B, the intersection of these lines would produce the resultant force C, which acts on the particle. Since this is a graphical method, we would need to draw out the force vectors, their lengths, their direction, and their sense to find the resultant force. And this resultant force C would move the particle the same way that forces A and B originally did. Another important note is that the value of the resultant force C is simply not the value of force A plus the value of force B we need to represent each of these forces as vectors and work with them mathematically to figure out what the value or the solutions would be.